Alright, so today I just want to talk a little bit about how to update your RetroPy through binary and source. Um, so there's two methods of updating your RetroPy. There's uh, installing the binary where it takes about 10 to 20 minutes and it's not as up to date as everything um, but it is it should suffice for most of your needs. Um, but if you've got the time um, and you want the most up to date everything then you can compile it from source but that will take you about anywhere between 15 to 20 hours maybe even longer depending on your internet connection. So um, anyways, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the setup script um, as we do for most of the things we update here. So uh, to do that we will do uh, cd retropy and then hyphen setup press enter and then sudo full stop forward slash retropy underscore setup sh and to autocomplete I'm just pressing tab um, it makes it a little more efficient and then you just press enter to open the setup script alright so before we do any updates or anything um, just to make sure if you've done a lot of changes on your RetroPy and you don't want to break any of those it might be a good idea to do a backup um, you can do that pretty easily through Win32 Disk Imager um, and I've, I've shown that on my previous video I'll provide a link to that um, just in case you forgot I need to learn how um, and then that way you won't be disappointed if something does break. It's probably good practice when you're doing major updates, um, but usually you should be all right. But don't quote me on that. I can't. You know, if you break things, that's your fault. So uh, let's see. Uh, the first thing you'd want to do is actually update your RetroPy setup script. So we'll go down to option U after five and then press enter. All right, so this will update the setup script. So it's got the, the most recent binaries and sources and whatnot to install from so once you've updated it I will usually reboot it just in case uh, you might not need to but I'm gonna reboot it um, and it's gonna kick me out since I'm on SSH right now but that's okay um, we'll go back in once I've loaded back up alright so it's finished rebooting and when I opened up the setup script again so you go back into the setup script and then it ran through a couple installs for updating it um, you might not necessarily need to be reboot you might just need to exit the setup script and then go back in but um, just be safe I just rebooted the whole thing so um, now we're back in the setup script and then we want to pick our first one so that's the binary based installation so just press enter and it's gonna take a while so it's gonna be about 10, 20 minutes or so. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to stop it right here, and then um, and then I'll open it back up once it once it's finished. Um, but just before I do that, I'm going to explain a bit about what this update does. So in the past, um, typically you'd have to like when you put ROMs onto your uh, RetroPie, you'd have to put them in the respective folder for the emulator. So if you were playing like if you wanted to play on the Pocket SNES, you'd put it in the SNES folder, and then if you want to play on the SNES 9X emulator, you put it into the SNES 9X. So that was a source for confusion for a lot of people, especially new people to the RetroPy project. And so Buzz has been working on um, a branch to uh, update the script so that instead of having a bunch of different ROM folders, you'd only have one ROM folder based off of the type of console, so you'd only have one for the Genesis, one for the Super Nintendo, and whatnot. And then before you open up your um, your your ROM or your game, you can hold down the X M button, and so not only can you modify your video settings, but now you can choose between different emulators to play with. So maybe if you don't like a specific emulator, you can just swap it there instead of having to move all your ROMs back and forth between folders in the ROM folder. Um, and so it's a lot more intuitive and a lot more efficient this way. So that's mainly why I'm updating it right now. Um, but you can update it for different changes because changes happen all the time as it's currently um, in development. And I think it always will be, but um, it's always getting better. And so it's something I've been really excited about. So I'll show you a little bit about how that works right after I finish with the update. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll start it back up once the update's all finished. Okay, so um, it's finished downloading from binary and or updating the binary install. So now it just shows, uh, it has a bunch of screens, um, messages showing where to put the BIOS for different emulators. So the first one is Atari 800. Um, showing you put it in the BIOS folder, 
I'm going to change some things in the settings. Um, same with Neo Geo. And again for Intellivision. And some other stuff. Okay, and then you start the station by typing in. Okay, so that's all good. Um, so I'm going to re reboot it again um, just to make sure everything's all good. And then I'll show you how it looks in the back end with the ROMs and how it differs from what it used to look like. Um, and then I guess we'll go from there. So, All right, so um, I guess Lord of the Falls is still there, but there is one thing that did change is you've got your Genesis. Um, it's symlink to your Mega Drive because that was a confusion for a lot of new people, um, people that aren't in um, the United States or the people that are in the United States, because um, it's called Genesis, but it's called Mega Drive everywhere else. Um, so that's symlink to the Mega Drive folder, so that way that uh, gets rid of that confusion. Um, yeah, so I've added my thing, my ROMs, and I'll uh, show you how it works on the uh, television screen, since I don't quite yet have the right tools to screencast my television. So sorry about that, but um, yeah, so we'll go to that next. All right, so I've started up my Raspberry Pi and you see that there's one more change in the menu. It gives you a Retro Pi menu. And this is actually really useful. I really like this, uh, this addition. So it gives you a bunch of different options to change settings. So you can configure your splash screen from here. You can change audio settings, um, netplay, file manager. Um, you can register your RetroArts controller here. So that, that's nice that that's added instead of having to go through um, all the stuff in the command line. Um, so that's that's really good. So you can mess around with those settings and see what um, what you like to do there. Um, and then, so I'm going to go into a game in the Mega Drive. Um, so it's Fix It Felix. So it opened up into it. And so I'm going to hold down X. So it opens up into this little menu here. I'm sorry if you can't see it. Um, but so the first one is select default emulator for Mega Drive. And you can see it's got the LR right before it, and that stands for Libretro. And so that means that anything with that LR before it will work with your RetroArch configurations. Otherwise, you might have to do, um, so like for your controllers and stuff, that will work with RetroArch. Um, but for any other ones that might be a little different that don't have the LR, um, you might have to do some specific configurations for your controller um, that way. So that this way, it can at least help you understand which emulators are not working um, and why they're not working, at least as far as your controllers are concerned. So you can just um, select that. So you press enter, select emulator for the ROM. So I can choose uh, between DGen, uh, Libretro Genesis Plus GX, or Libretro Pico Drive. And Pico Drive I found is the best, but um, that way you can just choose whichever one. And then once you start it up, um, then you can so type in the default emulator. So uh, I want to do Pika Drive. So once you're done with that, then you can just choose Launch, and it'll launch up into your ROM. And you can also change video modes and other stuff here too. So um, yeah, so you press Enter, and then there you go, it opens up into my game, and then you can go out and play and do whatever. So hopefully that's useful to you. Um, I, I think it's really useful, and I think it's one of the better um, changes that have happened for RetroPie. So um, yeah, feel free to, to test that out and see, see what it, how it works for you. So, thanks.